On April 1st, I started TikTok ads for a brand new Shopify store. In 30 days, I was able to take that store to over $85,000 in revenue and over $10,000 in profit using just TikTok ads. I'm about to break down every single step that I took so that you're able to replicate this process. And the best part is, I'm going to do it for absolute free. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so first and foremost, I would like to just um, show some proof really quickly that all the numbers that I was talking about are not BS, they're completely legitimate, and all of my profit adds up. So here's my live view that's extremely hard to fake. Let's go ahead and do my profit breakdown. Here's my profit breakdown for the month. As you can see, on March 31st, I did $0 in revenue, $0 in profit, and that got all the way up to like, uh, pretty decent amount of revenue. Now, my profit is actually a little bit higher than it's displayed right here. Um, my shipping costs just recently went up like a couple of days ago, so I had to like bump up my product costs, which recalculates it for the entire month. So in reality, I did like, I would say two to $3,000 more than I'm showing you. But um, yeah, so anyway, basically, um, my marketing costs for TikTok are not counted. This doesn't integrate with TikTok. Basically, this is just my Facebook retargeting costs and stuff like that. So I had a $38,000 net profit after my product costs. And I'll just go ahead and refresh my screen for you guys. So as you can see, it's all legit. And then we'll go ahead and subtract my TikTok advertising costs. All right, so here are my TikTok advertising costs. As you can see, my total spend for the month of April is around $28,000. So if you subtract my $38,000 profit minus my $28,000 ad spend, that's a little over 10 grand in profit. And keep in mind my profit is again a little bit higher than this and we also haven't finished the month yet. It's about halfway through the last day of April. All right, so now that we've gone ahead and gotten the proof out of the way, I'd like to go ahead and show you guys how exactly I was able to do this and I'm not really going to hold back here. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to reveal my product or anything, obviously. But from the steps that I'm revealing, you should honestly be able to replicate this process yourself. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. The first step is getting approved. Now, unlike Facebook ads, this is a lot harder than you may imagine. Getting approved took me, I would say, three to four months, around seven applications, and it was just a pain in the ass, but I did get approved and it's possible to get approved. You just have to be extremely persistent with it. So I did make a video on how to get approved for TikTok ads and I will recommend that you check that out after you're done watching this video. I'm gonna link it in the description below. The next step is product selection. Now, when I first came into it, I kind of thought that TikTok was all just kids and I kind of geared my product selection towards those kids. So I thought about what teenagers would be inclined to buy, and I also thought that stuff that teenagers could buy. I didn't want to sell anything too expensive, and I also tried to choose a product that was trending at the moment. Now, one of the funny parts about this product, and one of the easiest ways I think that you can validate a TikTok product, is if that product is saturated with Facebook. Now, I never would have sold this product on Facebook. I didn't really think that it would be able to sell on Facebook due to the incredible amount of competition for it. However, I knew that with TikTok ads, that was actually a good sign because it validated the product and also there's not near as much competition on TikTok. I think that that's really the biggest thing because as we're gonna talk about in later slides, the demographic of TikTok, the user base, is a lot broader than you may expect. Products that are geared towards the 25 plus market and the people that actually have money have actually been doing really well for me recently. So I wouldn't necessarily let the demographic of what you may assume TikTok's audience to be stand in the way of your product selection. Really one of the biggest and best signs of a winner on TikTok is the fact that the product is saturated on Facebook. All right, so starting out, I basically just went ahead and did my normal brand layout. 
So I essentially just used the debut theme. I ended up having an existing store that was paused. So I just went ahead and like rebranded this entire store. I made the entire website, um, got the logo made and everything like that. And um, it, it really wasn't hard at all. The reason why I rebranded one of my current stores is because I, I try to keep a couple paused at a time. That way it looks a lot better from Shopify's perspective if you scale it quicker. Because if you start a brand new store and then you scale it to 85K in a month, you're gonna get some holds put on your Shopify payments. However, if your store has been existing for two years, it just hasn't had any sales in those two years, then Shopify is not really gonna care. One of the biggest reasons I believe that I was successful with TikTok ads is because I ordered the product and I recorded my own ads. I guarantee you that if I used ads from YouTube, I would not have had near the amount of success that I did. I was able to record ads in a 16 by nine format, which is like the, the vertical phone video format. Um, and for that reason, they looked a lot better on TikTok and I was just able to get better quality content than any of my potential competitors could have had. So I ended up making three different creatives to start off with. Um, they weren't really that good. I mean, they were decent, but my creatives were subpar to say the least. So I just launched these three creatives to figure out which one would do better. And then from there, I was able to start really testing. All right, so again, what I ended up doing was just launch three different creatives and these each had identical ad groups, which is essentially like an ad set. They had absolutely no targeting besides just selecting TikTok as your placement. And they were each running at $20 a day, which is the minimum budget on TikTok. So after a couple of days, my creatives were already getting sales. And considering I hadn't even touched the targeting and my website and my ads were both not really that great, um, I, I just threw the store together. I mean, I kind of figured it was worth a test, but I didn't think it would end up blowing up. But anyway, they got some sales in the first couple of days and I kind of had a hunch that this was gonna be a winner. So what I did from there was I just launched 10 to 15 interests just single interest with not touching anything else as far as targeting goes. I used the best creative that I have found from my three original tests and I just cut losers after they spent money for one day. So essentially once they would spend $20, if they didn't get a purchase, I would go ahead and cut them. My break even for this product was around $20 so it ended up working out pretty well. So after I launched those initial interests, I decided to start playing around with my targeting a little bit more. I decided to test ages, different genders, different times, and a couple of other things as far as my targeting goes. One of the coolest things that I learned while I was doing this was that TikTok does actually have a place that you can break down your results. Now, with Facebook, it's super, super easy. You just click breakdown, and then you select all of your metrics, like age, gender, country, and stuff like that, just so that you can see exactly who's buying your stuff and where you're wasting your budget. Now, I was pretty disappointed that TikTok did not have that, but I ended up finding out that if you click reporting, you can essentially build your own custom spreadsheets. And these are gonna show you the important metrics and who exactly is buying your product so that you're able to like kind of narrow in your targeting and just overall decrease your CPA. So when it comes to scaling with Facebook, I think one of the best parts about this video and about this store is that I still don't have a great scaling strategy. I think that it's absolutely mind boggling that I scaled to $7,000 in revenue in a day with a very, very rough scaling strategy. You can't even touch $5,000 a day with Facebook ads unless your scaling strategy is very, very precise and proven. So one of the biggest things that helped me scale with TikTok was just continuing to test. I found the right people that were buying my products and I also found good creatives that performed a lot better than the initial ones that I launched. I continued testing and I'm still testing to this day different targeting, different ads, different interests and stuff like that. One of the most effective things that I found while scaling is to combine two to three of your best creatives in one ad set and then make multiple ad sets for variations of your best interests. For example, if you have five interests that work, in one ad set, I would have interest one and interest two. In another ad set, I would have interest three and interest four. 
And then another ad set, I would have interest one and interest three and interest five. And then just going from there, as far as different variations and different combinations of your best interest combined with your best creatives. I also use ad sets that still target absolutely no one, maybe narrowing down by like the age or the placement, but I really just don't touch targeting at all. And then in addition, I have ad sets that target look like audiences, not that those can be scaled, at least from my perspective, extremely high. So I launch all my scaling ad sets at $100. I also launch all of my testing ad sets at $20. And then once I kind of find something that works, I'll go ahead and scale it from $100 to $250. And Whenever I do that, I end up just killing the $100 ad set and then duplicating it and changing it to $250. A lot of times when I'm doing this, I'll go ahead and switch out the ads because I've found a lot of issues with overlap as far as the creatives and the audience go that prevent the ad set from spending its entire budget. So what did I learn from this case study and this experiment? I want to reiterate the point that I kind of said earlier in this video that I really wasn't expecting this store to blow up. The amount of work that I put into it is just laughable in comparison to the amount of profit that I made. I learned that TikTok ads are actually the next big thing. Like I had a hunch, I, I kind of knew, but just the fact that I was able to take this store and scale it so aggressively with such a rough strategy is just incredible. So I think that TikTok ads are just working way too well to last long. I think this is kind of how Facebook and Google were in their infancy stages. Everyone that's advertising here is making a killing, but eventually once the platform gets overloaded with advertisers, everyone is going to be fighting for a smaller piece of the pie. Another thing that I learned is that TikTok is extremely strict with the ads that they allow on their platform and disapprovals are almost regular. So essentially what I've kind of come to do is just launch two for everything that I would normally launch one of. So if I want to scale a certain product by $500 in a day, I'll just go ahead and launch a thousand under the assumption that half of those ads are going to get disapproved. It's definitely super, super annoying, but as long as you prepare for it, and as long as you know what you're getting into, then ad disapprovals aren't necessarily a huge deal. Another thing that I kind of mentioned earlier is that getting ad sets to spend their full budget can become a extremely large problem, especially when you're scaling. Now, I still haven't found a great strategy to prevent this, but just to give you an idea of how big of a problem this can be, I believe I checked the other day and I had like over 70 ad sets running. And then when I broke it down, there were only like, maybe 25 that had spent in the past couple of days. So it's definitely a huge, huge issue. And I think that once I'm kind of able to figure this out, if I'm able to figure this out, it's going to allow me to scale way higher than I've been able to so far. So another thing that I learned that really surprised me is that the TikTok audience is not what you would expect. It's not just 10 year olds that don't have debit cards and can't spend a single dime. There's a lot of adults on the platform and there's a lot of people with deep pockets. Not on this store, but on other stores, I sold products for 40 and $50 and they're absolutely killing it. So I think that it's super important to just realize that there's a ton of products that could work on TikTok and the potential is just insane. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope that you took a ton of value out of it. And I hope that I was able to really just help show you what's possible and the true power that TikTok ads hold. If you enjoyed this video and if you got value out of it, which I truly hope that you did, then please help me out by clicking that subscribe button below and also giving this video a thumbs up so that other people are able to see it. I highly, highly encourage you to take action with TikTok ads. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the three additional videos that are in this series. Thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.